Welcome to Thriving Tribesmen. My name is Corey, your host. I'm excited to be making this episode. The scarcity mindset is fueling your rejections. I learned this the hard way. So when we were learning the skills of being a pickup artist, I'd moved to London at the time and we used to go to a place called Leicester Square. And Leicester Square is, a, I don't know if any of you guys have been there, it's a, it's a place in London where it's completely busy. It's real, real central. And sometimes you can have at least up to about 100,000 people walking past every single hour. So it's a really, really busy place, but an amazing place to really perfect your game because you know, you've, got in, you've got a lot of people to be working with in terms of interactions and with so many material things that things that we're, we're trying to test in terms of just uh, interactions with women. So as we were doing this initially, because we were keeping things platonic, friendly, and we would get into so many interactions. But then you get the number, and as you get the number, you, when you ring her, it wouldn't, it would, she would flake, or even if she did pick up the phone, it would sort of fizzle out, and then she wouldn't even turn up to the date. So we knew that we had to change things up. And one of the things that we recognized was that instead of trying to generate attraction on the phone or at the date, you had to generate attraction on the actual initial interaction. So we started doing a little bit of that, but what that did was increase the risk of rejection because before all the interactions were going well because we're being platonic, like we kept things friendly, but we now had to increase it by really putting this element of attraction. And this forced the issue to whether she had to actually make pick whether she wanted to be in, uh, attracted to you or not attracted to you. And this was now the risk which which came up, which that by, by doing so, it increases the chances of rejection. So it came up to a point where when we're having those interactions, when you injected a little bit of those attraction spikes, we call them, uh, or these things where you get attraction spikes, the interactions would go sour in some, some cases. And for everyone for a large period of time, whenever it went bad, and if you were sort of earlier on in the morning, for example, for the rest of the day, it would go bad. And it was one of those things that you just knew that as soon as you hit a rejection, it, it was affecting the next interaction. And we were wondering whether it was the rejection that was causing it or it was our mindset. And obviously it was the mindset. So we started thinking, what is the mindset of how we're dealing with this rejection? It became a very important thing to understand, like, what... What am I doing in between me being rejected and the next person that speaks to? And then the behavior started becoming very important. And one of the things that we discovered was that as we had good reference of opening and talking to people as a reference, it gave us a sense of abundance, a sense of confidence that, you know, I've done this before, I've spoken to somebody before, I feel comfortable, I feel confident. And then when the rejection happens your mindset will switch to oh i'm not good enough <laughs> uh, i'm terrible i'm unattractive and so on so there was this f sense of abundance because of the reference of experience that we had of actually approaching At this point we'd approached over thousands of women at that time so we'd had loads of interactions we had you know that reference experience to to say okay this is we can do this but when you hit the rejection side, something would flip in your mind and then cause you to think that you're not good enough at all. So it started, we started actually understanding that, okay, the way we handle rejection, especially as soon as it happens, is the most important thing that you have to do. Now, a lot of you guys suffer rejections within your relationship. And again, you've dealt with it differently. So there's a lot of things that have happened. So in terms of the way you view yourself, you suffer with depression. Some of you guys feel unloved, you feel unwanted. You, you've done all sort of, there's sort of many things that have happened to alter your state. And in terms of the way you view the relationship, there's so many negatives that you can take from the whole interaction that you have with your, your partners. And how you deal with those is the most important thing right now in terms of progressing your relationship. So what does that mean? Is that um, 
I remember in my time when I was in a sexless relationship and it was at the most terrible part, I just thought, okay, if she's not available sexually, I'm just going to make, you know, watch porn and use porn as a way of escaping. And I would use certain devices. Now, I, could, I started finding myself getting addictive to, addicted to stuff. So it was either I would watch a lot of shows, you know, um, I would get addicted to watching certain uh, programs where I could just escape. Uh, I would watch, uh, I would watch porn, like I said, uh, I would eat uh, really sugary stuff, just get into food comas and stuff like that, you know. And it was a lot of the things because I just sort of hated myself and I just wanted to escape the way I felt and I found different ways of doing so. So the, a lot of you guys are doing something like that and it doesn't have to be food, it doesn't have to be, it could be the fact that you're smoking, it could be uh, that you're now smoking uh, weed or you, like me before, I was watching a lot of shows or you're watching porn or it could be a case that you're you're, in your mind, you think that you're probably a sex addict because you're, you're, you're doing stuff online that you shouldn't be doing in terms of, you know, images that you're watching or the stuff. So there's so many things that, especially when, when, you, when I speak to people and I, I, I ask them, what, are you, what is it that you're doing in order to cope with this sexless relationship? They tell me it's the stuff that they're doing. Sometimes they're, on, they're honest enough to tell me exactly what they're doing. Sometimes people don't tell me what they're doing, but they... they Whenever you are feeling that state, the one thing that was the biggest change for me was allowing myself to go, allow that state to happen. So, for example, when I start feeling sad about myself, I start feeling depressed, I start feeling unwanted, was really sitting into that and really seeing what is that that's fueling it. And when I discovered what that was fueling, it was the case, the case that I felt unwanted, I felt depressed because she didn't want me or she wasn't choosing me. And I, was, I started diving deeper. Why is that? Why is that so important to me that she chooses me? Why is it so important that she she gives me this sex? And why is it so much that when I'm not getting it, it's causing me to feel so dejected and so depressed? And I sat in that for a large period of time, sometimes not even knowing what to do with it. But I didn't try and escape it. And... I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but I, I said, I'm not going to do anything to escape it. I'm just going to try and sit into it so I can try and understand more what is actually causing this. I started realizing that a lot of it was the fact that I just really didn't like myself. And I wanted my wife to be the one that validates me, that makes me feel wanted, makes me feel... And that was a scarcity mindset. That was me wanting her to be the one that makes me feel like me. And that was a wrong thing. You know, I needed to make me feel like me and me enjoy being with me before I started approaching my wife. And this was the biggest breakthrough for me because the moment I started becoming more comfortable with myself, comfortable with who I am and not allowing sex to be the thing that determines whether I'm happy or not, um, that became the leverage I could use in terms of seduction. So uh, when she rejected I knew that she was not rejecting me, she was rejecting my approach. And it made more sense. And again, because I had that self-confidence in myself, uh, if she wanted to, or she didn't want to have sex with me, it didn't affect me, which was an attractive trait for her. Because before, anytime she said no, she knew that I would go into this downward spiral and just be dejected and have a negative emotion around the house. But all of a sudden, when she said no, she saw that I was okay. And that, for her, was like liberating and gave her an opportunity to actually start exploring sex, sex again. So a lot of you guys, are the, what you're doing in between being rejected is a very important thing. Like what are the v devices that you're using in order to, you know, med medicate yourself or to escape your, the feelings that you're feeling? Because I know it's a very painful process when you are going through a sexless relationship. It's a painful process uh, trying to fix it and not getting anywhere. But when you start seeing, or when you start medicating yourself to, to feel better about yourself so you can escape it, what it does is that it creates this scarcity mindset then that fuels you to continue being rejected. So there's this vicious cycle that is going on 
and you can stop it by just really stopping and really trying to ask yourself the questions. Why is it that I feel so dejected by this rejection? And obviously, you're feeling dejected because you're being rejected. But why is it so important to you that your partner gives you sex in order for you to feel good about yourself? Like, why is it, why is it so important? And, and again, when was the last time you actually felt good about yourself without uh, her telling you something good like she loves you or she showed you affection or she showed you any attention when was that for last time that happened in fact even before you got married when was the last time that happened where you actually felt good about yourself you felt confident you felt like you didn't need to do anything in order for you to feel good you were just content and fulfilled with yourself and again this is the thing that is going to cause you to feel attracted to you because when you approach us from a suggestion standpoint you're approaching her from a place where you are in contribution rather than in a place where you are trying to take something from her. And again, this is another thing is that you, uh, within a sexless relationship, uh, whenever you see yourself in a negative sense, you are not going with the intent of taking something from her and she feels that intent. And again, she, this is where we talk about stuff like outcome dependency and so on. But whenever you are in a scarcity mindset, you're in a place where you're trying to take and therefore it's not collaborative and it doesn't feel, it feels forced. It feels like she's not going to get any, anything out of it. And if you've ever heard your wife saying, all you want is about sex or everything that you talk about is about sex, it's because she feels this desire from you that is just self-fulfilling for yourself and it's not con in contribution because you're coming from a scarcity mindset. So thank you very much, guys. Hopefully this is something that's been helpful for you guys and I'm really excited about 2024. We're looking to help 250 men get empowered within their relationships. And if you want to be one of those men, go to thriving underscore tribesmen and type blueprint and we'll give you a free blueprint on how you can change your sexless relationship. So thank you very much. I'll be seeing you guys soon. Take care. I've just re-listened re to this episode. Yes, if you want to go and get a blue free blueprint, go to thriving underscore tribesmen on Instagram. So it's thriving underscore tribesmen on Instagram and just type in blueprint and we'll be able to send you all the information that you need in order to start empowering you in your sexless relationship. Thank you.